it going. All right. Hi, I'm Terrell Turner. I am the founder of the Business Talk Library. And my background is accounting and finance. So what I do is I focus on helping other businesses understand the finance and the accounting side of their business. Because when they understand that part of their business, they're able to make better decisions. For example, I have clients that you know started launched the business a little over a year ago. And one of the things that we work through is helping them understand how to manage the cash flow of their business. That's the timing of when cash is coming in and when cash is going out. And through the time of COVID where a lot of restaurants around them were closing down. Yes, they're in the restaurant industry, but they were able to stay open and not only stay open, but they were able to expand to be profitable in less than a year and to also look at opening more locations. And that came from them being very diligent about understanding the financial side of their business. Because when you start a business, you didn't get in business because you wanted to be your own accountant. You got in business because you either like your product or you like the service that you offer. There's something about it that you really enjoy. And that's good to know because you definitely want to make sure you understand and you love that. So in this course, what I am going to, I'm just trying to pull it up for you. What I'm going to do is we are going to go through a topic that a lot of business owners tend to have questions and challenges about. And that is how to get a loan from a bank. Because what I have seen is many people have had very, very strong misconceptions about this topic. And they've been very unsuccessful because they've been trying to grow their business and they need the capital to invest in their business, but they just can't get it. And part of it is because they don't understand some very, very critical things when it comes down to how to get a bank to give you a loan for your business. So after you know talking to several businesses i mean on our my show the business talk library interviews where i interview other ceos founders and executives we i've interviewed over 230 different executives founders and ceos talking about their their business their story their experiences and one of the topics that we've talked about a lot is how to help businesses become bankable or how to be how businesses can become attractive to a bank so they can get a loan to expand whether that's you know adding a location even if you're trying to buy another business is how to get there and i've also lived through it myself because my wife and i we invest in real real estate property where we we own several pieces of property where we've had to go through the process of getting a loan to get those finance so i've been through it and what i wanted to do is take what i've learned and put it in a course and then before that i made this course one of the things i was very strategic about is i had a meeting with a commercial banker and that commercial banker and i we had some deep in-depth conversation and we talked about some stuff that i'll be honest with you i don't think his employer would be happy if his employer knew the things that he and i talked about because he gave me a lot of the inside scoop about how banks and investment banks think about loans and financing businesses so i decided to take some of that stuff and to put it in this course and to help you understand it so let's get rolling with the course the first thing i want to do is i want to talk about you know the banking business model because that is where the biggest misconception starts because most people don't understand how the bank actually works they don't understand the business model of the bank and for, to be honest with you some people they don't even understand the business model of their own business so one of the things that you have to get good at is you have to be able to understand what matters to the bank and one way of understanding that is to break down their model so the way i like to help people break down the business model of a bank or i call it the banker's business model is through a series of questions now the questions that we're going to ask that you I mean you see them listed on the screen now that's going to tell you the banker's business plan or the banker's business model these are the questions that they're asking and then we're going to walk through what the objective is for each question so you can start to understand why it matters the first one is the question is 
Who are you? In your business model, you need to clarify who are you. Now, from the bank's perspective, who is a bank or who are they? And they're a for-profit financial institution. Keyword for profit. They are a for-profit financial institution. Banks are not there to be a charity. They are a business. And because they are a business, you have to understand what drives their business if you're, bus if you're going to make your business attractive for them to give you a loan. The next question is, what do you do? So what does the bank do? A bank manages the inventory of money. So when you think about, you know, a, a typical business, let's say if you're in the business of selling, you know, selling washing machines or selling electronics or, you know, to that business that sells electronics, their inventory is the physical electronics that sit on the shelf. And what their job is, is to advertise those electronics when people come in to help people understand what the electronics are, understand which one is the right one for them, and to sell them a electronic device. When it comes down to a financial institution, money is their inventory. Their job is to sell you money. Now, it sounds very interesting and it sounds, you know, probably something you've never heard it said like that, but it's true. A bank's job is to offer you money in exchange for either fees or exchange for interest rates because that is how they make their money. Now, the other thing that they also do is they also they have to manage the inventory, which means they have to collect the money first, which they get it from people who want to deposit money into their bank or people who want to do transactions with their bank. Like, let's say, you know, if you want to sell products online, you usually have to have a merchant processor. So you have to set up an account where the money can be collected online for you and then it's moved from that person's account into your account and then it's given to you. Well, behind the scenes of all that are transaction fees. Like there's so many different transactions that are happening. Well, banks, um, financial institutions are in the business of facilitating those transactions and they charge a fee for those things. So the, you know, when you think about it, their job is to collect money from depositors, to safeguard it in the bank, to actually transact or you know process the transactions of money moving from this place to that place when it happens electronically and they are in the business of selling money and they do that through issuing loans <laughs> and offering accounts and integrating technology through common term you'd hear is merchant processing so when you think about that you know the bank is in the business of managing managing the inventory of money and finance transactions. And the way that they do that is through issuing loans, by allowing people to open bank accounts, and by, by processing transactions on the back end. Now, the next question you want to ask is, who do they do it for? Individuals and other businesses. <laughs> so. Individuals come in, they make deposits. You may take out individual loans, whether it's for a vehicle, for a home, or some uh, get a credit card, whatever that may be. But in this course, I'm focusing a little bit more on the businesses. So other businesses either set up an account so they can have a merchant processor or they come to the bank so they can get a loan because that is who they want to serve in the aspect of when you think about businesses thinking commercial bankers, commercial bankers are focused on other businesses. How do they serve other businesses with financial products? And then the next question is you want to ask to understand this business model. What are the types of results that banks usually get? This is a big one. Banks make billions and billions of dollars a year. The reason why that is important to know is because when you think about the other four questions that we walk through, in order for you to, you to make billions of dollars in profit every year, you have to be really good at the other four, which tells me that banks are really, really good at knowing 
how to do the other four questions. That is why the banker's business model is so strong is because they know how to, they know how their business model works and they actually work it very, very well, which is why banks make billions of dollars a year. So when you're thinking about getting a loan for your business, the first thing you need to do is you need to think and you need to understand how does the bank's business model work? Because if you can figure out how their business model works, then you can start figuring out, hey, you know what? This is how I can position my business to be more attractive so the bank will say yes when I go in for the loan. So now you know how the business model works. The next thing that I think that you really need to understand is, okay, now that I know how they work and I know what the bank is about, what they care about, next, I want to move into something else. I want to move into what does the bank really want? <laughs> I mean, because we've talked about the ins and outs of, like I said, of how they work and how their business model works. But now you really want to know what they want. And I'll break that down in three areas. It's going to be credit, financials, and cash flow. Because a lot of people think that your credit score is the most important thing when it comes down to getting a loan from a bank. And I will tell you after conversation after conversation with bankers, with other investors, with other business people, your credit is not the most important thing when it comes down to getting the bank to give you a loan as a business. Maybe when you're, it's just, you know, your personal life, maybe your credit score is probably the most important thing from what you've heard. But when it comes down to a business, your credit score is not the most important thing when it comes down to you getting a loan from a bank. But we'll talk about it though. It is important, but it's not the most important. Now I'll explain that. So the first area, when we're looking at credit, the first thing they want to know is, do you have credit history? And when they look to see, do you have credit history? They want to understand is, is there any data that they can analyze to see what your habits are? Because that's what credit history allows them to do. Credit history allows them to look and see what are your habits? When it comes down to money, how do you handle it? How do you deal with it? What do you do with it when you get it? And that's what credit history tells them. The next question they want to know is, how long is your credit history? Now, what this tells them is it's a reliability thing. Because, I mean, let's think about it. If you have credit history, and let's say your credit history is only two months, you really can't make a really good you know, trend, or you really can't see what the person's habits are in two months. I mean, think about it like dating. I mean, if you were going to date somebody, if you only dated them for, let's say, two weeks, you really haven't had enough time to learn, you know, about their habits and stuff like that. You need a longer period of time for you to get comfortable with it. And for the bank, that's one of those important things that are looking in your credit is, you know, what does the history look like? Is there enough data there for us to come to a conclusion? The third question is, how many credit accounts do you have? And part of that is, you know, they want to know who else trusts you with their money. Now, that's an important thing because if you think about it kind of like dating, I mean, if some stranger just walked up to you that you never met, you can't find anybody that knows this person, this person is an absolute loner, that nobody else can vouch for this person, it makes you a little more skeptical about, hmm, do I really want to do business with this person? And then another thing you want to look at is when they start to look at your credit, you know, your credit accounts and they see, okay, yeah, you got a lot of credit accounts, but if they start to see things that look a little, that look a little risky from their perspective, let's say, for example, you have a ton of payday loans. Well, not only do they want to see, you know, who like that other people trust you with their money, but they also want to see what's the type of company you keep. I mean, again, let's go back to dating. 
a guy walks up to you or a girl walks up to you and you know what you know that they stay around shady company or that they're around people who are a bit questionable in their character if those are the people that they're surrounding their self with that may influence how much you actually trust them or how much you actually want to engage with them because you want to understand, hey, the company you keep says a lot about you. So when it comes down to your credit report, when they're looking at the types of accounts that you have, the type of credit that you have, it matters. And to the bank and the financial institution, they're looking at it and they're wondering like, hey, what's going on? If this person is getting a ton of short-term loans, one of the things they may be asking is like, hey, this starts to look a little risky to us. All these different types of accounts that are open, you know, all of these different credit cards with companies that, that we don't know, that we aren't familiar with, then that impacts their perception of you somewhat. And then the next one is they want to know what is your usage? What does your usage look like? So let's say, for example, if you have a credit line where you can spend up to $50,000 on whatever it is in your business. Well, if every single month you are maxing that out, that looks risky to them because what that says is you are using every bit of credit that you have and that's not actually that's not working in your favor. Yes, the credit is available and yes, it's there, but you don't want to get into a situation where you're using an a, a exorbitant amount or percentage of your credit on a regular basis. It looks like something that throws up red flags to people. Now, you may be doing something legit, but to the financial institution, it does bring up concerns. So they want to see how much of your credit are you actually using? Because if you're using a higher percentage of it, then it makes it look risky. So let's, you know, sometimes what I've heard some people, uh, you know, throw out some rules of thumbs of, you know, 20, 30 percent or whatever of just being able to pay your your, your amount uh, or pay your, your debt amounts down before the end of the billing cycle, which helps lower your usage rate. It can be helpful. Now, ultimately, you really want to talk to your bank or, your, or the bank that you're trying to get a loan with and understand from them, hey, they may be able to give you some inside information and say, hey, these are kind of the safety criteria we really look for. Or these are things, if it goes above this percent, then that usually draws a red flag for us. If you're working with a really good banker, they may help you understand what that is so you already know where you need to play. Now, the last question is, what is your score? Now, there is some looking into your credit score. Now, what this score is, is it is, I guess you say, trusted rating companies that give a rating on your credit score. Now, as a business, like I said, credit is not the most important thing, but it is, it is impactful to whether they say yes or no. Now, you want to make sure that you're understanding that you're creating habits with your financial credit that are not going to be a turnoff to financial institutions. So those are the questions when it comes down to credit. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is, are the financials. This is probably where most business owners spend the least amount of time, or I would say, yeah, yeah, they probably do spend the least amount of time on their financials because they just deal with their financials at the end of the year when their accountant puts it all together. But that is the wrong perspective. Your financials are tools that you should be using on a regular basis to navigate how you are running your business. And the bank knows that because the bank is constantly watching their financials. So they expect the people that they choose to do business with, the people that they choose to do money with, what they notice is if you're watching your financials, it is actually a good sign for the bank because they feel a little more at ease of giving you money. So when we get into the area of the financials, now there are different sets of financials that you can provide to the bank. And what I want to focus on here are the different types of financials that you can provide the bank and the level of credibility or weight that that will have with the bank. So 
The first option are prospective financial statements. Now, this is where you've thought about your business, you've worked with your accountant to come up with what you think your estimates are and what you think, how you think your business is going to perform. If you provide that to the bank, the bank will, they may look at it, depending on who your banker is um, and what your relationship is, they may look at it, but it has very low weight and credibility because it's all about you trying to predict the future. And they know that, hey, reality doesn't always happen the way you plan for it. So they may not weigh that one as heavily. The next one is going to be your historical financial statement. Now, this is where you're looking at what has already happened, like that they're seeing the trends. Now, this has a low to medium weight to it, depending on how long your history is, depending on a relationship. But typically, I mean, when they look at this, I mean, your financial statements, um, if they're just pulled out of your system, they're not going to be weighted as well because the bank doesn't know like, hey, who prepared those financial statements? They don't know if the accounting was done properly because to be honest with you, you can put anything that you want in those financial statements. That doesn't make it true. So if it's just your financial statements pulled out of your system, then it, it may not carry as much weight with the bank because they don't know how credible this is. I mean, it's good that they know it and it's good that you have it, but they don't know how credible it is. Now, the next level is where you have audited or reviewed financial statements or financial statements that are prepared by a CPA. Typically, these type of financials have a little bit more weight when it comes to a financial institution because what they're betting is that if these financial statements have been audited, that means some third party has actually looked at these, reviewed these, and is confirming that, hey, these financial statements are materially correct. And I know an audit will cost you some money. I mean, an audit is a minimum, you know, a you know, several thousand, tens of thousands of dollars. So sometimes you can go with a review, which is not the full blown extent of an audit, but it does give you some, some verification, or you can go with a compilation. You can contact a, contact a CPA and to give you a little hint, if you're trying to get a loan with a bank, one of the, and you're working with a banker, one of the questions that you might want to ask the banker is, hey, is there a CPA that you usually work with or that you've seen that does good, good compilations? If you can get with that CPA to help, you know, give a compilation to go through your financials, to actually generate the financial statements, that may go a very long way with that banker because the banker already is familiar with that CPA and is familiar with their work and has a little bit of trust in their work. So if you say that, hey, I had XYZ CPA or CPA firm prepare these financial statements, that may go a longer way in their mind when they're looking at it because it makes it a little bit more reliable. Now, at the very top when it comes down to financials is definitely your last two years of tax returns. And to be completely honest with you, this is probably almost mandatory. I mean, when you're going to get a loan, I mean, it's great that you have your perspective financial statements of how you think the business is going to do. That's great. And it's good that you have your historical financials, how you've done in the past. And it's great that you have your audited financial statements, which validate your historical information. But one of the things that a lot of commercial banks will just immediately let you know and ask for is like, hey, I need to see the tax returns. And the reason why is because, you know, there is a difference between there's a difference between the profit that you show in your financial statements, especially if you're not a publicly traded company, because if you're not a publicly traded company, which means you're not traded on the stock market, you really don't have to produce financial statements to your investors or to your owners. It's not a regular habit that you have to do. But when it comes down to your taxes, you do have to consolidate and generate financial statements for tax purposes that must be, or I guess you say, they're assumed that those financial statements that you use for your tax return are correct because if they are wrong, then, then you're going to have an issue with the IRS. 
So from the bank's perspective, the tax return tends to give them the probably most reliable, or I guess you say, they have the most confidence in your tax return information because they know that that has to be verified with the IRS. And if there's a problem there, the IRS is going to actually let you know. And so the, the bank doesn't want to get into having to audit your financial statements. They don't want to have to get into verifying everything. So they trust the tax return since it is an official filing that every business must do. So when it comes down to looking at your financial records, the tax returns are going to be the highest level of credibility when it comes down to a financial institution. Now, why is all that important? The reason why this is important is if you go back to the business model of the bank, the bank has a business that is based on them giving you money that they have in their inventory. So you can go invest in your business, you can go buy assets, you can go do different things with the money, but in exchange, you are gonna pay them back the principal plus an interest rate. And for the bank, what they are looking at in your financials is they want to understand, can this person pay me back? What kind of profit can I expect from this loan? Because no bank wants to give you a loan if they don't think you can pay them back. And this is why they look at your financial statements and your financial information is because they can start to see based on the numbers. If we gave this person a loan, hmm, what kind of, you know, what kind of payments could they make? What, could, how much could they pay us back? Or can they even afford to pay us back? So when they start to look at that, they start to get a better understanding of the risk that they're gonna be going into if they give you this loan. So the last area of the financial section, or I guess you say the what do they want section is cash flow. Now cash flow is very different from cash balance because a lot of people think, oh, I have X amount of dollars in cash sitting in the bank, so the bank will be able to just give me a loan. Well, no, when it comes down to a business, the bank, wants to know that you can repay the loan plus interest. So they want to know, do you have enough cash flow to actually pay us back the principal amount plus interest? And that is where we get into cash flow. So when you think about cash flow, the first thing we want to think about, okay, all right, what is the bank's goal? And then what are the options that the bank has to protect them or to enhance their opportunity when it comes down to cash flow? Now, goal number one for the bank is, is or I guess you say, yeah, goal number one is they want you to pay interest because they're going to make a profit off of the interest that you pay. They give you $50,000, but they want you to pay back the $50,000 plus interest at whatever rate they agree to. Now, one of the things that they can do in this or one of their options in this area is, is that they can charge you a different interest rate depending on how risky the loan is. This allows the bank to protect themselves or protect against the risk or to compensate themselves for the risk that they are taking. The next one is, you know what, what the bank could do is they could reduce the amount of funds that they have at risk, which simply means they require you to make a higher down payment. Or what they can say is, hey, based on the financial records that we have reviewed of your business, we can we won't give you the fifty thousand dollars but we can give you thirty five thousand because that falls within their risk tolerance because they're thinking about cash flow they're thinking about how are you going to be able to pay us back and if they don't think you can pay them back fifty thousand they're probably not going to give you fifty thousand they're going to adjust it and they may require you to make a higher down payment or what the, what's the top common term that you hear is loan to value ratio, meaning that 
the loan will not exceed the value of whatever you like say you're, you're gonna buy if the loan is gonna be collateralized so to break that down let's say you're investing in a house and you're gonna buy this you know commercial property and you're gonna rent it out the commercial property is worth you know two hundred thousand dollars they may say hey we want a in an extreme situation they say hey just for easy math let's say if they want a 50 percent loan to loan to value ratio meaning the loan will be 50 percent of whatever the value of the property is so the value the property is valued at two hundred thousand. the at a 50 percent ratio they'll give you a hundred thousand which means you need to come up with the other hundred thousand to actually buy the building because that's where they hedge their risk. They lower the amount of money that they're gonna give you because of the risk that they see because they're trying to protect cash flow. The next one, what they can do is they can start to, I guess they can charge a different rate so that they can collect more up front. And one of the ways that they do this is through their fee structure as well as through variable rates. And when I say variable rates, meaning they may charge you a higher interest rate up front and then they allow you to either, you know, to, to consolidate or they allow you to refinance at a later period of time. Or what they may do is say, hey, here's your interest rate. But if you miss a payment, what we're going to do is we're going to recalculate everything based on a higher interest rate. Because if you're going into a situation where the bank feels like you're riskier, the bank wants to protect cash flow. So the bank is going to look and say, all right, how can we adjust to make sure that we get compensated for the risk? And then the last one is they can hedge the risk of total loss. Now, one of the ways that they do this is by making you either offer up collateral for the amount of money that which means we're going to give you the money but you have to actually give us access or give us the title to something that you already own i mean one of the most common ways you see that are with vehicles when a person i mean in the personal sector when a person buys a car the vehicle is collateral meaning if you don't make the car payment they come and get the car that's that's how collateral works well when it comes down to business loans that there may be things that they may require depending on what the nature of it is they may require something as a as a collateral or they may require you to, to have a co-signer meaning you need to have someone else who has the financial wherewithal to back you up in case you don't pay which means it gives the bank the right to go after them if you don't pay so when you think about cash flow remembering the business model the business model of the bank is to give you a loan or to take money that they have offer it to you for you to repay the loan plus an interest because the interest is how they make a profit and what they're going to be thinking through is what does the cash flow of this loan look like and can the person who wants the loan from us can they afford to actually pay it back so when you think about what does the bank really want at the end of the day the bank wants to make a profit by offering money to you by giving you a loan the bank wants to make a profit and what you have to think through is hey based on the way i operate my business if they gave me the loan can i show them that hey my business is financially stable enough to actually afford to pay you back and i can actually afford to do it based on looking at my credit history you can see hey i've done this before um, other people have given me money i have a history of paying people back and here's my current or here's my most recent financial situation you can see that i can afford to pay you back which makes the bank more interested to give you money because you have what they want now the next thing as we talk about what they want we also want to talk about what they don't care about 
because a lot of people spend a lot of time focusing on things that the bank really doesn't care about. And it's great that you put all that effort in, or actually, you know what? It's not that great that you put all that effort into it. It may be great for you personally, but it's not really something the bank cares about. And after having some very transparent conversations with commercial bankers and going through the process myself, there are a few things that the bank doesn't care about that, I, that we're going to walk through. The first thing is they don't care about your, your company mission. Now, I know you care about your company mission and you got to live and you die by your mission. I mean, it's great. You want to save the world. You want to you know, change the energy spectrum with sustainable energy or you want to provide a healthy place for people to come work or whatever it is that you're trying to do. The bank really doesn't care about that. I mean, it's great. The, and, and your commercial banker may pat you on the back for it. But remember their business model. Their business model is not to be in charity. Their business model is not, so we wanted to start a bank because we wanted to change the world. No, banks are a for-profit financial institution. They don't really care about your mission as much as you do. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't care about it. That just means stop trying to pitch the bank or your commercial banker on your mission. That's not what they really care about. Also, your business plan. Now, the business plan for your business, like, you know, what you guys are planning to do, what your projections are, and you may have, hey, you know, I've studied my target market. You're ready to, you know, you, you're ready to go pitch on Shark Tank. The bank doesn't care about that. Because again, going back to the business model, they're a for-profit institution and they are used to looking at financial records and making calculated risk. It's about economics for the bank. So when you are trying to pitch your business plan and you have this huge stack of all this stuff that you want to walk your banker through, your banker is sitting there thinking to themselves, I really don't care about all that. I just need to see enough of the numbers and enough of the data to make a calculated risk decision. Because if giving you money is going to be more risky to me as the bank, I don't care what your business plan says. I'm not going to give you the money because for the bank, it is an economic decision. And that is something that you have to understand because one of the feedbacks that I got from one of the commercial bankers, he said that, you know, there are a lot of people who come into the bank who sit there and they, and they pitch and hit their business with their, you know, their business plan. And the whole time he's thinking to himself, he's like, you know what? I'm in the business of giving you money to invest in this because we want to make profit on the interest. And what he ends up realizing is that when he starts digging into the numbers or when they get to the part of the financial plan where the financials actually exist, that's the smallest, most looked over part of their plan to where they either say, no, I'm not giving you the loan or yeah, I'll give you the loan. But here's the interest rate way up here. And that's not what you want to be in. So remember, your commercial banker does not care about your business plan as much as you do. The next thing are your awards. And I know it's great that you got those awards and it's great that you are recognizing this magazine, that magazine. Your commercial banker does not care. It is an economic decision for them. Banks make calculated risk based on the factors that are important to them. And again, going back to their business model, the bank is in the business of making money from interest payments, from transaction fees. They are not in the business of, you know, of, I guess you say, of, 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 of missions. They're not in the business of supporting your hypothetical business plan. And when it comes to your awards, all of the awards that you got, when it comes down to being a business, what you have to realize is most of the awards that are given are given by organizations who are trying to attract you to become a customer of their product. For example, if we look at Forbes magazine, Forbes magazine recognizes people because in return, they want to sell more magazines. Or even when these different city publications have the 40 under 40 list, they recognize all of these 
professionals that are or, or business people that are 40 under 40 because they want to sell more of their publication. Or even when you have a company like Ernst & Young, which does the Entrepreneur of the Year Award or the Business Person of the Year Award, the reason why they do it is because their primary clients are other businesses. It gives them an opportunity to get in front of their prospective clients. Be and that and banks understand that banks know that banks know the awards that you've been given by other organization it was because that other organization probably sees you as a potential client of their business which is why they gave which is why they even considered you for the award so from the bank's perspective it's great that you have the award but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's of value to them because banks make economically calculated risk. And then the last one is the bank really does not want to own your collateral. Again, going back to the business model, the bank is in the, in the business of selling money for interest payments. They're in the business of managing financial transactions, that, that technology integration. They are not in the business of taking your car or they're not in the business of taking your house. And to be completely honest with you, when a bank has to repossess something, it is more of a hassle because often the bank just turns around and resells that asset or whatever collateral they took. They end up reselling it or auctioning it off at a lower price than what they what they had to take for the loan. Now. Of course, they would like to be able to recoup all of their value, but for the most part, the bank is not does not want to be in the real estate business. They want to stay in the financial sector. So the bank is not really as motivated to just take your stuff, which is a very important point to know. Because if you already have a loan and let's say, you know, situations have changed, like let's say you find yourself in a situation like COVID-19 where you are unable to make payments on your loans, it is best for you to reach out to your financial institution and to have a conversation with them and let them know, hey, this is what's currently going on in my situation, which means I won't be able to make payments on the same terms that we had before. But hey, this is what I can do. Can we renegotiate or come up with some temporary alternative until I can get back to the point of making the regular payments? Now, if you go back to the business model, remember, the bank does not want you know, does not want to be in the business of of selling cars or they don't want to be in the business of selling other businesses. They want to be in the business of money. So if you go to the bank before you get you become default on your loan, the bank is very willing most of the time to actually renegotiate and take a different approach than what you had before. Now, the key thing is understanding the bank cares about making money from their interest payments and processing transaction fees. If you understand that and you know, hey, you know what? I fall in on hard times. You can go to the bank with a proposal that still gives them what they want, maybe on slightly different terms. But if you're able to give them something that they want, they're more likely to work with you and make adjustments. So there you have it. I mean, the things that the bank doesn't care about. And, and you know, let me go back to it. The things they don't care about are your company mission, your kind of your business plan, your awards, and they don't really want to own your collateral. So there you have all the different phases of the things you need to understand if you are going to, if you're going to actually you know, get a loan successfully from the bank. There are the things that you need to keep in mind is the banker's business model. You need to know what they really want and you need to understand what they don't care about. Thank you for watching. This has been another training from 
the Business Talk Library. Now, the Business Talk Library makes tons of resources just for you. For small business owners and entrepreneurs, we are creating tons of training that you can check out that will help you navigate the financial side of your business. Again, you didn't get in business because you wanted to become your own accountant or your own finance person. You got in business because you wanted to run and grow your business, which is why we created these simplified accounting and finance courses that will help you navigate this, that side of your business so you can continue to focus on the things that you care about the most. Thank you for watching.